Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. How are you? Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me at all. If there's one thing that every single person on this earth, man, woman, or child can agree on, it's that Dracar Noir will never, ever, go out of style, right? I mean, every, everybody agrees on, on that. I am gonna be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances here today that I don't think will go out of style. 10 years from now, these will still smell just as nice as they do today. So let's jump into it and talk about some fragrances that will never go out of style. And friends, I will have these linked in the description as always in case you want to check them out. Also, Gents10, that's the code for TwistedLily.com or MaxAroma.com to save 10% off your order. Also, a friendly reminder that my fragrances, Jet Black Enigma, Terra Nova, and Blue Ridge, all of which smell amazing, by the way, I'm not biased at all, can be found at every Perfume Mania and every fragrance outlet store in the United States as long as they're not sold out. So if you find yourself near one of those, pop in, give them a smell, and if you do decide to buy one, use the code GENTS10 for $10 off your order. That information is in the description. And of course, if you shop at michaelmalol.com, use the code GENTSENSE, 20% off, my friends. Okay, guys. Let us do this. Let us jump into it. The first fragrance that I'm going to be presenting to you today, submitted for consideration of the Gent Sense Society, the GSS. Creed, Green Hours Tweed. I still do really enjoy a lot of fragrances from the house, but I, I don't wear them quite as often at all as I used to. But Green Hours Tweed will always have a place in my heart. This is one of my favorite spring scents ever. Extremely classy, masculine, very fresh and green as the name entails there. Verbena, iris, ambergris, mint, some of the notes in the fragrance here. It does smell similar to Cool Water from Davidoff, but this is much higher quality. And this one's kind of an easy one, right? Because this came out in the mid 80s and it still works today just as well as when it came out. And truthfully, if you wanted to put cool water in this list, that would work also. From there, a much cheaper fragrance, Lalique's Encre Noir. Now, Encre Noir is not a safe blind buy for your newcomer into fragrances. Yes, I do think it's one of the best cheap fragrances out there as far as bang for your buck. It's got a little bit of a similarity to Sycamore from Chanel only much more affordable. But this is the type of scent that does not try to do what's hot at the time. Cypress, vetiver, cashmere, and musk, some of the notes in the fragrance. It's a little bit dark, a little bit rooty, as I always say. Woody, a little dry, smells fantastic. But some people who have not smelled a lot of fragrances are not gonna dig on this one, so be warned. So that one's a vetiver type scent. Let's go with another vetiver type scent that is aptly named Vetiver from Guerlain. And you gotta love it. The name is just, it's Vetiver, dude. Of course, that's not the only note in the fragrance here, but imagine if other fragrances released by other fragrance houses were as inventive with the name uh, as this one. Dior Sauvage, no, no, just Dior and Broxen. That's got a great ring to it. Mugler's Pure Havan back in the day. How about just call it Mugler Tobacco? So it obviously does have vetiver. It also has citrus, tobacco, pepper. Uh, it's got floral notes in here. It's actually got a whole bunch of notes. And this one does have a new bottle style. It's gone through a bunch of different bottle styles, actually. I grabbed this one because it has the most fragrance in it, but I've got like four different bottle styles of this stuff. But if you're looking for a very classy scent, gotta check this stuff out. Unfortunately, the price has gone up at discounters. This used to be real cheap. Like you could find this for, I feel like $25 or so, and the price has gone up with how hard it has become to find. So that's unfortunate. Tom Ford up next, big Tommy F, and the fragrance is Beau de Jour. This is in the private blend bottle. Obviously, if you buy this now, it's in the signature collection bottle, and it's also cheaper, so that's nice. Lavender, rosemary, oak moss, patchouli, and mint. This is another fragrance like Guerlain Vetiver that is classically masculine. It does have an old school feel to it. Maybe not quite as much as Guerlain Vetiver because this one is overall a newer uh, fragrance with the original Guerlain Vetiver that goes back quite a while. But this is done in a uh, throwback style, you could say. It's a bit similar to Davidoff's Zeno along with a few other fragrances that are in that, that family. This is one of those scents that just comes across as something that will always work. It will always smell masculine. 
it will always smell appealing. It will always smell high class. I would also say as kind of a, a bonus, not exactly fragrances I'm highlighting in this video, but Neroli Portofino, Tobacco Vini, fragrances like that I think also are gonna have great staying power over many, 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 many years and still work, especially Neroli Portofino because that does smell similar to 4711 and 4711 has worked for hundreds of years. If something's worked for hundreds of years, safe to assume it's gonna keep on working. Let's switch up the style next to Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Parfum. So the fragrances I've featured so far have been more classic, masculine scents, classy scents. This one is more sweet, it's warm, it's a, a great date night fragrance, it's a sexy fragrance, a compliment puller. Amber, tobacco, ginger, cardamom, and grapefruit, some of the notes in the scent here, and it still works just as well today as when it was first released. This is a fragrance that doesn't come along very often. That type of scent that when it comes out and you smell it for the first time, you just go, oh, okay. Like something a little bit different here, something nice. And when you do get something that carves its own path right away, Scents like that typically can last a lot longer. Now, of course, this did come out after the Eau de Toilette and it does smell similar to the Eau de Toilette. It's just, I feel the Eau de Parfum takes that original idea and fleshes it out even more. So this is the one I'd go for. Okay, okay. This next one is the one that I had the most waffling on. And to be fair, I mean, these are not the only 10 fragrances that are gonna smell awesome 10, 15, 20 years from now. There are countless fragrances, both from the past and even things coming out now, that would still work. Uh, regardless though, the fragrance is from Mansara and it is Intense Cidre Boise. So yeah. It is a very popular fragrance, of course, from Mansara. I feel like Intense Cidre Boise is a little bit better than the original Cidre Boise, which is still a good scent, but I find this one just a little bit boosted up. You know, it's just a little bit higher up as far as my internal tier list goes. Same overall idea as the original. So it is what it says on the tin, right? It's intense Cidre Boise. Maybe you would say it's a little bit woodier, but overall it's accomplishing the same things. You have citrus, you have currant, you have a nice sweetness in here. You've got some leather, a little bit of spice, amazingly versatile. It's a fragrance people love. Very good performance, lasts a long time, projects well. Some people have compared Cidre Boise to Aventus from Creed. I think side by side they're really different, but it is possible that if you're a big fan of Aventus that that could carry over to this uh, because of the faint similarities in fruity sweetness that they share. We'll follow that up with a blue fragrance. I had to put in a blue fragrance and this is the one. If I went with just one that I think will stand the test of time, maybe more than others, it'd be this guy right here. Bleu de Chanel, Eau de Parfum. Citrus, mint, ginger, incense, amber, woods, some of the notes in the fragrance here. So why Bleu de Chanel instead of Dior Sauvage or YSLY or one of the other many, many blue fragrances out there? Well, Bleu de Chanel, especially the Eau de Parfum, has a level of versatility that I think is almost unmatched across everything. Designers, niche, indie, like this is one of the most versatile fragrances that has ever been made. Any season, daytime or nighttime, any situation, it works. Yes, it's a compliment puller. Absolutely, people dig this stuff. I mean, that's why it sells like crazy, right? But it's not like too in your face. It's not too aggressive. It doesn't go overboard with the sweetness either. Everything is just prim and proper, like a finely tailored suit. Oh, I should have said this earlier. Uh, when I say that these will not go out of style, I am not saying these will never be discontinued because all bets are off when it comes to discontinuation of fragrances. I'm not saying any of these are going to be discontinued or anything. I'm just saying if in 10 years, like some of them are no longer being made, that wouldn't surprise me. Okay, we had to get an Aqua de Joe in here because I'm an Aqua de Joe fanboy. Shout out ADG, my old school love my uh, signature scent for so long. So I was thinking, uh, as as happens anytime that Aqua de Joe is going to be put into a video here, which one, right, which one? My favorite current release is Profundo, but I think the one that will carry on for longer with more people really enjoying it and wearing it is Profumo. C-notes, bergamot, incense, patchouli, rosemary, 
uh, geranium, some of the notes in the scent here. It has that Aqua de Jo DNA, modernized, given a twist, given a little more depth, taking away some of the, the floral overtones and replacing it with a, a bit of that aromatic feel, that smoke from the incense. Light smoke, but still noticeable. Gives the fragrance more versatility, more usability. You can rock this nearly year round. I mean, if you wanted to, you can pull this off in winter. Nobody's gonna question that. Another one that's a big compliment puller, lovely scent, Aqua de Jo Profumo. It's kind of like Blue de Chanel. Just one of those deals where it just works. I mean, the original Aqua de Jo is still a bestseller because that DNA, it just works. Lana de Lome up next. The Eau de Toilette, the original. Cardamom, lavender, cedar, uh, vetiver. Some of the notes in the fragrance. A little bit of bergamot off the top. The cardamom here is killer. Everybody knows that. Your mom knows. Your girlfriend knows. Of course, it's gotten its fair share of hype over the years, and we all know why, like I just said. The cardamom. Wonderful nighttime fragrance, fall and wintertime, big date night fragrance. I mean, for a lot of people, like on the Mount Rushmore of evening fragrances, the one is up there, this guy, and this one's up there too. Let me know in the comments the other two date night fragrances on date night, Mount Rushmore. Lana Weed Alone, I gotta put it in here. Uh, it still works today, and this DNA is still relevant. Lana Weed Alone Blue Electrique, when that came out, everyone went crazy. You know, a little reminiscent to what they did with Frozen Cologne, but then Yves Saint Laurent and their infinite wisdom discontinued Blue Electrique, at least in the US, impossible to find. Shout out YSL, thanks for that one. All right, last fragrance is a different one. It is an independent fragrance from the house of Tower Perfumes, and it is LDDM, Le du Desert Maracan, Maracan. Le, Le de Desert Maracan. Maracan. I actually really like that um, there was an interview I saw with Andy Tower years ago. I don't remember where I saw it, whether it was on a website or a video, but he was talking about the name of the fragrance and how he kind of regretted naming it that because nobody could pronounce the name. And I was like, yes, we'll just call it LDDM. That is so friggin' amazing. Like this stuff, I absolutely adore. It is nothing like any of the fragrances I've talked about here today. I do kind of hate the atomizer on the tower bottles. I've got a whole bunch of tower fragrances and I really love them, but man, I hate these. They end up kind of leaking. And when you put the cap down over top, it, it makes a seal here, but then it's still like, it leaks. Um, it's unfortunate. But now my hands smell like it, let's go. Does, does it look weird when I, when I do that, I'm just smelling my, yeah, that's not weird. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but it's like on the bottom of the cap as well. It's it's like the price of entry, but I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care about the bottle having a little rinky dinky leak sometimes. It just smells so good. So with this one, you've got coriander, you have cumin, you've got labdanum, amber, some woody notes. It is warm, it's brisk, it's lightly sweet, it's spiced. As they always say, uh, it smells or is supposed to smell or emulate the smell of uh, a wind blowing off a desert through a spice market. It is something that stands the test of time. It is its own thing. And because of that unique nature, that will always smell awesome. There we have it. 10 fragrances never go out of style. And there may be some other fragrances that you think should have been in here, stuff like Dior Homme Intense or even like Ralph Lauren Polo, the original, but we only had 10 to work with and I wanted to get in a bunch of different kinds of things here. So yeah, those ones also deserve to be in here. Let's just pretend they are. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.